Okay. Is the mic okay? Mic is on. Hello, everyone. Good morning. You can hear me? Okay. Excellent. So I would like to welcome you to our talk, our presentation, a short introduction into the Training Labs project. It's a project that we started to support training groups, people who try to do trainings in OpenStack environments. Our mission is to provide an OpenStack cluster for training, for trainees. What we're trying to achieve is an automated setup, something that is very easy to install. You just click something, and it will give you an OpenStack cluster. We're aiming for minimal hardware requirements. For ISAS, we were able to do this with 4 gigabytes of RAM, the small hard disk. For Juno uh, and later, we might need a little bit more RAM, but 8 gigs are really plenty. We support all the major platforms, so you can install that training cluster on Linux, OS X, or Windows. And we have minimal dependencies. You will see that all you really need is a backend, a hypervisor. We're using VirtualBox usually, um, and our software that you can just download. It should also be easy to remove because many of the students, they just want to check out OpenStack, do a training, and then remove the software without having a lot of software in their environment or in their registry or wherever. What we also like to give you is a reproducible environment because it's important that when you do training that you know what your environment is going to look like. It's going to be the same every time. What we're using is the install guide. The official OpenStack install guide is what we are reproducing. We're following the steps from those manuals to install the same cluster that you would get if you followed those instructions. And last but not least, we're providing an OpenStack cluster that you can use and that you can rebuild without access to the internet. So if you're doing training in a place like here where everybody's using the internet and the uh, Wi-Fi is flaky, you will still be able to provide training and the cluster for training because we don't need internet. Once you get the initial software set up, it will work automatically without internet access. Hi, um, I'm Saili Lunkar and I work for SUSE. And um, I'll be taking over the rest. Uh, of the next few slides. So uh, like Roger said, we mainly uh, provide a training cluster. And since we follow the install guides very closely, um, we support the main core services that are in OpenStack. That is um, Keystone, Horizon, Glance, NOAA, Neutron, Cinder. Heat is supported um, in Juno and Kilo. Celiometer is supported, but it's not, um, uh, it's not um, active by default, so you can um, activate it, and then you, you just need to do some configuration to use Celiometer. But um, yeah, we can um, we can use it. So um, let me show you what we do on Mac OS X and Linux. So firstly, uh, you need to get OS Bash. So uh, we have a repository on git.openstack.org. It's called Training Labs. You can clone the repository since uh, we recently moved to a new repository. We don't have uh, the tarballs yet, but they will be available shortly. So you can either clone the repository or you can get the tarballs. Um, then next, uh, to run OS Bash, so we have um, two options to run OS Bash. One is with the GUI, and one is without the GUI. So we mainly use VirtualBox currently uh, to uh, deploy the cluster. So if you do, if you if you parse the minus g GUI option, then um, you can see the VMs that are actually created and what's going on inside them. But if you you can run it silently as well. 
So uh, w once you run this, um, it's going to start um, downloading the stuff. This is only for the first time. Um, so we, um, it downloads the ISO image. Currently, we, we're running on Ubuntu. Um, so it's only the first time that it will download the image, of course. And then once it's cached, it will just use this. Um, so the base disk, uh, initially a base disk is created. Uh, we will get into um, a deeper understanding of this later, but um, it's mainly just installing the operating system and caching the packages that we need for the OpenStack packages and the other dependencies that are required. So you, you can see uh, when the script is running, um, at what stage, and uh, um, which part of it is going on, so the init, upgrades, downloads, and then which service is getting installed. So you can see it's installing MySQL, and you can just follow, and then once it's done, so it, it shows you how much time it takes, roughly. Um, the first time it'll take longer because it's downloading the packages, but once uh, you have it run the first time, it takes barely 20 to 30 minutes to run the second time. So um, once you run it successfully, you can log into the nodes. So if, if you have the GUI option enabled, then you can just, um, you, you can see the VMs here. Uh, you can log into the VMs, or you can, we can use SSH uh, to log into your controller computer network. So we have a three node architecture. So we have the control computer network, and the architecture will be explained more in details in the next few slides. Um, you can access the dashboard, and um, you can create instances and do whatever you need to do here. Yeah. Uh, we also have a script that uh, you can run to launch an instance, so it's just a test script. So um, you, can, you can find it in the tools folder, and this is the command to run um, the launch instance script, and it will just launch an instance. and. You can probably ping your instance, SSH into it, or anything else. And if the test succeeds, then this is the result you get. And you can SSH into the VM that you create using the following IP. It's a Cirrus image by default. And there you go. So you can log into your guest virtual machine. Um, Hey guys, um, I'm Pranav. I work for SUSE and uh, also help contribute to this project to make it more awesome so that more and more people can deploy OpenStack without having to um, touch their machines or change anything on their host but just install VirtualBox. Um, we should also do it for Windows because a lot of people use Windows in the universities. Uh, a lot of students, they usually like Windows for some reason, and also in some uh, big companies or corporations. So not everyone is a Linux user. Um, so that's why let's do something with Windows. So as uh, Sally mentioned, um, you can either clone the repos, clone the training guides repo, or you can get the tarball, just expand it, or the zip, f uh, the zip file for Windows. Um, as you can see, the bash, the .sh file is useless in Windows. It can't run it. You could try with Cyclin, but it's, um, it's not recommended. So we have some batch files which are automatically generated. Um, it's generated by the, by the Jenkins shop on the back end, but right now we don't have the tarballs ready yet. The repo is quite new. So here you can see that there are a few batch scripts. And the first, the first thing that you have to do is create the hostnet. So this creates the virtual networks or host-only networks on VirtualBox or on the, on the Windows platform, which allows VirtualBox VMs to connect, to connect to the host machine, communicate with each other. And um, that's, that's quite important for a multi-node cluster. The second part is uh, to create a Ubuntu cluster node. But before that, we need the base disk as Sile mentioned, and we'll get into more details on what exactly is the base disk and why do we need it. Why not just install a node and call it controller? 
but uh, for now just uh, understand that we need to create a base disk and uh, so for that you run this script and then the next one is to create the Ubuntu cluster which means that it creates a controller compute and network node cluster on Ubuntu or using uh, using Ubuntu as the guest operating system so you can just open double click on it or open it via command prompt and you can see that this is installing the base disk which is installing the operating system creates the base disk and then um, you can install the control you can start the cluster which installs uh, different nodes like the controller node here and after a few minutes you can find that all the three VMs are up and running these this is because this is a multi node cluster we have um, we have the three three nodes controller network and compute node and this is the most awesome part is that you have step-by-step -step snapshots on every VM on every node this allows you to you know play around with something say hey why not try Keystone API uh, the new version but I don't know if it will break my existing cluster so you can just revert back to this snapshot and do what you want to do continue if it doesn't work if it breaks you can just use the stable snapshot so I'll hand over to Roger who will explain how exactly we do this okay so I'm giving a brief architecture overview the OS bash workflow starts with a user and their PC or their laptop first thing they will do is that's what we showed in the previous slides is they will install VirtualBox or in Linux it could be KVM as well so they have to have a hypervisor in addition they just have the, the OS bash files it's just one directory that they already have somewhere they use OS bash calling it which will operate the hypervisor we're using the VBox manage binary to remote control the hypervisor um, OS bash also transfers client-side scripts to into the VMs that get created um, those client-side scripts are just bash scripts that mimic what the install guides do and with that you get also uh, the KVM installed on the compute node so you have a hypervisor inside your hypervisor and then you can install guest VMs you can run guest VMs on your virtualized cluster you can SSH into the controller node you saw that you can SSH into the other nodes you can also directly SSH into the guest VMs and from there going out okay so let me just quickly explain to you what exactly happens in there um, so the first step is to install the operating system so what we do is we install the operating system once create a temporary disk and then upgrade update the packages upgrade the kernel reboot it and cache the packages so this is very important because um, in in many training scenarios or many places where there is community training or even in professional training or hands-on sessions the internet never works right and that's a very big problem so we do cache all the packages here we do not use any any special magic or any uh, anything like a caching server but we just use the download only option so apt gets download only and you can also do that with yum and uh, zipper so what it does is it catches caches the package on the file system and uh, you get the base disk so this base base disk is ready with um, with the required operating system installed in it with all the package packages already present but not installed so the next step is to deploy the controller node so it creates a copy and what it does is it does not create a, a clone of the disk but starts working on top of the base disk so if the base disk is around 8 gigs the controller node will would take a few MBs or 200 or 300 MBs depending on the amount of storage space it takes or amount of things that um, that is unique to controller node 
so we we have a very compact um, we have a very compact cluster and the biggest disk is base disk which is around 7 or 8 gigs depending on uh, depending on the operating system version and uh, what version of OpenStack you're trying to install. So during the deployment, uh, what it does, it, it takes a snapshot after every service. As I showed you all the snapshots in VirtualBox um, GUI, so it takes a snapshot after every service, it installs the, the services and this is kind of like a loop till it finishes all the services on controller node, it moves on to compute node, does the same thing, and the network node. And after, um, after installation, you get the cluster, and I, I will explain, I'll explain how it is, um, how exactly the speed is increased. So the base disk is installed once, and you need internet for it. And you can take the base disk, take it with you in a small flash drive, go anywhere, plug it in, and run the cluster. It will install without internet. Um, so it has the updated operating system. It has all the packages cached in it. And um, the internet requirement is only when you create the base disk. And you can use it as many times as you want. And in any kind of environment, it will work without any hassles. Um, the other awesome thing is node snapshots. This is really, really handy when you have limited training time or limited demo time. So maybe you have around one hour to explain some concepts. And let's say you want to just showcase how to install heat. Or you are developing install guides, or you are trying to test out some code that you wrote, or you are a DevOps guy who d wants to understand how Cinder works. So why do you want, uh, so that person, or the person who just wants to test out one single component of OpenStack, does not need to install the entire cluster. They, he can uh, just use the snapshot, revert back to Cinder, as I explained earlier. And that is very handy, and it's, it's very fast. So you can actually give 15 minutes for one service and give, give a very nice, amazing training session in one hour. And that could work really well. You can also um, restore, uh, restore to any point. So if, let's say, one of the services fails to install for some reason, so you can restore it back, and you can start or continue from that point. So this is another point of view, or this is kind of like the architecture, or whatever type of diagram you, you want to call it. So the host operating system is on the laptop or the base machine or workstation. And uh, please take a note here, this is not for production deployment, right? So usually people want to deploy OpenStack on a bunch of servers, but our project is, uh, is made only for home users and for students. So you can have all of the three mentioned uh, operating system versions which, with a processor that supports virtualization. This is important because we are spawning um, OpenStack or cloud instances on the second level of virtualization. And that requires a little bit of uh, power from your processor, which means that you just need something like an i3, i5, or equivalent quad core for AMD. And uh, you actually don't need a very powerful processor. And I think most of the modern laptops, they, they come with decent specs to run this. So this is the repository, the folder that you clone or you get from the tarball. And this, and this is the content of the repo. So I'll just quickly explain what each folder means. So the config folder contains the configuration. So let's say um, your, your, your home network, the, the uh, network addresses or the subnet of your home network is con conflicting with one of the host-only networks. And you want to use both of them. So you can just change the network parameters. You could change the amount of RAM given to the uh, controller or compute node. And you can tweak a few configuration systems there. You can say, hey, I don't want a snapshot for this, um, for this service. Or, hey, I, I don't want to install this service. I just want to you know, do something on my own. That's one of, the, one of the points. The image folder caches the base disk and the operating system image. The logs, of course, 
it's very important if you want to debug or if you want to just um, take a note or, or look at what is exactly happening later on. Um, the scripts is the is a folder where you can find all the required uh, guest site scripts. These guest site scripts are useful for um, it, it's it's the one to one or almost equivalent of the installation guides in the form of bash scripts and they are responsible for installing each and every service inside in the VMs here. So the compute node, controller node and network node, the services installed come from the scripts folder. The tools folder has some handy tools like the test scripts or um, repeat tests. So that's that's what we use for testing our cluster because we need to know if uh, if we can deploy the cluster uh, properly or the deployed cluster does it does it actually spawn instances or does it uh, does it freak out somewhere in between and the lib folder it contains the um, library files or the files which are required for um, for helping out with installation for virtual box for injecting the scripts inside the VMs and um, running them so this is basically how how it it looks like when you when you want to take a deeper dive or when you want to start understanding how this training labs projects work on the technical side so i'll hand over to roger who will explain how to debug the clusters and okay um i'll just say a few words about our debugging tools because when you try to when you try to um port new releases of openstack to our training cluster, it's handy if you can develop quickly and see why something breaks or doesn't work anymore. Just following the, uh, the installation guides often will result in a broken cluster because there are some issues that are not mentioned in the install guides. So the first thing we have is log files. They're quite verbose and they tell you everything that the scripts are doing, uh, that are happening on the hypervisors, all the commands that we're giving out. Um, then we have a test script that was already mentioned by Siley, launch instance. Uh, that's a script that tries really, really hard to launch an instance. As you know, it's, it's quite easy to launch an instance if it works. But if it doesn't work, there are many failure modes, there are races. So this script just tries to launch an instance. And if it doesn't work, then it tries harder. It tries to go back or it tries to do a different way until it succeeds. This is also uh, good as an instruction for students who try to find out how to make instances work somewhere else. Um, we have test scripts uh, to repeat tests. So we can do a thousand uh, test runs, for example, which is important because there are quite a few race conditions in, in the OpenStack code or in the way the servers interact. And they're often hard to reproduce. So we have tools to repeat tests again and again. And so to make it, to speed it up even more, you can just start from a, a snapshot and just do like the last few steps of your installation and see if the race happens there or not. Um, this is a, a quick comparison between what the install guide may tell you and what we're actually doing in the script. So this, of course, it doesn't look that different everywhere. But in some places, uh, we add quite a bit of code to make it work. So this is what the install guide says. This is literally copied from the install guide. And this is what the script looks like. And as you can see, we're checking, for example, that the VLAN tags are coming up and that they don't show or indicate an error condition, which actually happens occasionally. So these. These three lines are the, f uh, the three lines here. The green lines are the green, the three lines here. And the fourth line didn't fit here because there's more testing code underneath the DHCP agent restart. Now, we often get asked, what is the difference between OS Bash and DevStack? And I hope you already know the answer by now because uh, we try to show that in our uh, talk so far. But just to make it more explicit, um, DevStack is a tool that is aimed mainly at OpenStack developers. 
So it uses the latest source code from Delta Sack repos because that's what the developers want to see. That's what they want to test. Whereas we, we install code from the official distro repos. Um, in addition, our code, it manages the VMs. So the user just has to double click something or start a script and it will automatically do everything. Create the cluster, create the VMs, install the scripts, do everything to set up the cluster. And there's no configuration needed. It, it works out of the box. It will install the install guides cluster out of the box. So that gives you a predictable environment for training that works. Now for the roadmap, what we have planned for the future, we would like to finalize our ports to Kilo and Liberty. Kilo is mostly finished, but we still have some rough edges. And after we're done with that, we're going to port the training labs to, to Liberty. Usually that's not a big problem because training doesn't happen on cutting edge distros anyway. Um, we already have a KVM backend. Um, the main reason we have that is because it's easier to use for integration testing on the OpenStack CI infrastructure. But we would still like to make it more versatile and match all the features that we have uh, with VirtualBox. Um, this is the CI system that we're still um, in the process of building on the OpenStack infrastructure and we would like to port the host side code of our scripts to uh, to Python because right now we're using bash for everything and we're going to stick with bash for the client side scripts because we want to match the install guides as closely as possible but on the host side it's just easier to real to use a real programming language but we but we are committed to to do our coding in a way that it will work and will be supported on all three major platforms as before. And what we would also like to have is support for additional distros. Right now, uh, our code should run host side on pretty much all Linux distros, but client side within the VMs, right now we're just doing Ubuntu. So if somebody wants to help us out and add something like CentOS, for example, or SUSE, they would be welcome. Um, what we're also looking at is some form of bare metal deployment because there are just some things you can't really do training with if you have all your infrastructure virtualized. There are still some differences between a virtualized and a hardware environment. So we've played around quite a bit with Raspberry Pi and we have some VMs running already in a virtualized environment on the Raspberry Pi but we're not sure yet if the Raspberry Pi 2 is going to be powerful enough for this. So this is still something we're working on. Um, so um, since we, we've um, told you all that this is mainly a training use case used for um, training purposes, um, I had conducted a few trainings in India. And um, I, I actually conducted around four trainings, but we have surveys from two trainings. Um, it was uh, a two-day training, and one of the days we were using um, the training labs uh, for a multi-node dis uh, deployment. We were around um, 60 people, 60 students, and I think we, um, oh, we, we got um, training clusters running for most of them except maybe two or three exceptions, and um, on Linux and Windows. So it was um, pretty successful, and um, you can see the survey results there. Um, uh, just added a snapshot from the survey results, and uh, yeah, um, it, it, it was a good session. Uh, we, we, uh, as we said, the factor that we didn't need internet well, it really helped because we uh, we cached all the packages and uh, replicated them on all the machines. So the, all, all they had to do was to run the scripts, and they had a multi-node cluster running, and they could play around with OpenStack, and that was very useful because that's generally the most difficult part when you get started with OpenStack. That you don't you spend um, good amount of time just 
trying to understand how to deploy the cluster before you can even get to know, understanding what OpenStack is. So that was one of the feedbacks that I got from many of the students there. Um, so this was a smaller training and uh, about 20 people. And this was a bigger training with about 60 to 70 people. So um, yeah, those are the results. If you need to know how we went through the training in more details, you can come back to me after the session, and I can probably tell you all more about the hardware configuration and how we manage all of that. Um, thank you for coming, and um, um, you can contact us on IRC or our email. So if you have any questions, um, I think we have some time left, right? Yeah. And uh, we have um, the meet uh, meetings, every weekly meetings on, um, uh, you can find the link for the meeting uh, here. It's on Friday. Um, this is the meeting that's at the summit, and we also have a weekly meeting on Google Hangouts, I think. Yeah, there's a question over there. Can you hear me? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, even better. Okay, so, um, so for those in here, okay, so I boot camp instruction, part of the delivery includes the actual, you know, typing the commands of, you know, going from one step to the next. Does this, this is great because I was actually working on this, now I can stop <laughs> and, <laughs> and I could uh, hopefully see what you guys have going on there, maybe help out a little bit. But is there a way of stripping out the the, the process that actually pulls the packages, uh, you know what I'm saying, or the process that actually configures the packages so that we can just simply have like a lab guide where this sets up the base environment and then we can have, you know, all of like the, the snapshots that, you know, so if they're going through and they are having a trouble with Nova, I could just revert them quickly to Nova and they can right. have like a working environment, see the VM and then continue on from there. So is it, is it, is it possible or is it easy to break it up a little bit? I, yeah. I, I think that's the part where uh, we use the screen, uh, the snapshots for at every stage. So we we have it literally at every stage, even before we start uh, building the OpenStack services. So if you want to roll back to Nova, you can easily roll back to Nova. Maybe do the manual um, instructions from the install guide if you want to do it, and then move on from there. But uh, you have to remember that, that they are cumulative snapshots. So if you revert back to a point. Right. Here, so all the all the snapshots below it will not be. Uh, you you won't find those services installed, and there is a reason because we need. Uh, there are some dependencies like without Keystone, you cannot have the other services running. So that's the sequence of the snapshots. But, but le let me add to this that you can easily customize our scripts, and the way uh, it's set up right now, there's, there's just a text file that is a list of all the client-side scripts that we run inside the cluster. So you can just comment out those that you don't want to have installed or delete them or add new ones if you have some. Uh, and it will just install that part of the cluster that you configured there. It's very easy. So when you get the, when you get the whole cluster up and running, does it, um, would I be able to revert each of the nodes back to like that clean image? Yeah. So we actually I mean, revert them all so to clean so basically they have a cluster. Yeah and then they can build it from there. Yeah, okay. that's very easy. Yeah, um, and we're happy to support you. If you have any problems, just shoot us an email or talk to us. Um, also, if you want to take a look at the cluster, we have a um, running cluster on our laptop. So if you're one, you can come there and just check out the code and um, maybe take a look at the dashboard or something. So do we have time for more questions? Yeah, we. Any more questions? Yeah. We could take one more question if there one, and if not, you can always catch us later or meet us at the documentation meetup tomorrow. We'll be there. Thanks all for coming and listening to us. Thank Hope you. to see you later.